welcome to Supernatural Life. My name is Patricia King and I'm your host today. I'm so excited about our topic because God is a miracle working God and he's also a creator. And we've been seeing people receive miracles of body parts. And we've heard testimony that even people are seeing angels bringing them from body parts departments in heaven. Now that might sound really way out to you, but wait till you hear some of the testimonies from our guest today, Katie Sousa. Hi. And Katie, you have been, I mean, of course, you know a lot of people who operate yes. in this realm. Yes. And you are operating in this yes. realm. And it's been amazing. Totally. That God's been replacing body parts. Yes. I mean, like Tony Kemp had a man that had his foot cut off by a lawnmower and the foot grew back. Okay, uh, I was online watching Apostle Maldonado the other night and two women, one after the other came up and they had lost a breast to cancer and each one of them felt the breast material growing so back. Awesome. Okay, it's like it's becoming normal now for this to happen. And I see it all the time. I just had a woman that I saw an angel walk in holding a liver. I said, somebody here needs a new liver. And the woman said, I have a fatty liver disease. I went over there. I said, say you, I receive my miracle. I receive the li liver. She said it. Wow. And then within an hour, I walked away from her. Within an hour, I heard transplant complete. Wow. I looked back at her. I said, how are you feeling? And her friend said, are you kidding? She said, she had a bright red swash across her neck from her liver problem, it's gone. Wow. All her pain is gone. She stood up, she said, all my pain is gone, all my swelling is gone. She received a new liver. God is such a miracle it was so worker, awesome. isn't he? Amazing. Yeah. I was in another country um, not that long ago ministering, and this woman came up for prayer. She was a pastor's wife, actually, and she said, please pray for me. My breasts are really, really uh, sore. And she said, I had implants put in. Uh -huh. They become infected, oh. and, and I just, wish I'd never done it and I don't know what to do and she had a fever and everything and so I got her to put her hand on them and I just prayed for a miracle and all of a sudden all the fever left her body wow. and she starts like um, shouting out to the interpreter about something happening and what had happened was God removed the implants. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and and she had the interpreter feel her and everything and she was so excited and she was just weeping she was so excited so oh my it's gosh. like you know these these miracles yes. these creative miracles but before we um move on we've had um two viewers with questions okay. the first one is asked and we're gonna cover these in a, yeah. in a moment do we command or ask angels to bring body parts. So I know that you've got right. some things to say on that one. Right. And then the next question is, do we access the kingdom to get new body parts? I need a new thyroid. Okay. And so um, those are a couple of questions that we wanna cover as sure. we are in this teaching. Sure. But uh, let's talk first of all about angels bringing yes. body parts because you've got so many testimonies <laughs> Right. On that. Well, you know, people go, well, what is that angels bringing body parts? Well, angels are, are ministering spirits yeah. sent to minister to those who receive Hebrews salvation. Hebrews 1, 14. Right, so they serve God by helping us, right? Sure. Now, God is a king. People say, well, angels don't need to bring body parts. God can just make it happen. Well, a king sits on his throne. He rules a kingdom. He doesn't get off his throne to begin to just do all these little tasks. He has servants to carry out the tasks. And I think he loves partnering. I think he gets joy in that partnership because if he did it all himself, there's no relationship in that. Right. So he's creating relationship with us in heaven, with us and him, with us in the angelic realm. And it gives us a chance to operate in our faith yes. to activate and work with the angelic realm too. And people will say, well, angels don't heal. That's right. They don't heal, but they can be part of executing God's sure. healing. They can it's just, deliver healing. They can deliver healing and they can release the power. They're in the presence of the Lord all the yeah. time. So they're carrying that power. They can release it. We see the example in the pool of Bethesda. There's all these lame and blind people, paralyzed people, yeah. and they're waiting for the angel to stir the water. And when they stirred the water, whoever got in was healed. I often wondered if they were bringing new body parts when they stirred the water. Yeah, really. The Bible doesn't say anything about that, but it's something to think about, right? Well, especially because in your experience, you've seen things like this happen. So you've I been have. in meetings where the Holy Spirit showed you angels bringing yes. in body parts. I was in a Kansas prison and I was ministering to the men there and all of a sudden I literally saw a, an opening in the heavens above the above the chapel. And then I saw a stairway come down and angels were coming down and they had platters in their hands. And so I was looking into what was on the platters and there were body parts wow. on the platters. 
Now, Tony Kemp has talked about seeing the body parts room. Other people have yeah. seen it. and But that's the first time I had seen it. So they came down, and right away I heard the Lord say, command metal to come out of people's bodies and for new body parts to go in. So I began ministering. I didn't know if there was anybody there with metal or not. Right. And two men came up. One man, his name was Larry. He had a uh, metal in his neck, and the other man was named Larry also. And he had metal. Uh, uh, you're going to see the video of a big pipe, a 32-foot long oil rigging pipe fell on his back and broke his back. He showed me the scar, 15 inch laminectomy scar, where he had three 10 inch long metal rods wow. and two metal plates. And the other Larry had metal in his neck too. And those angels were carrying a neck and wow. a, a spine and they inserted them and took out the metal. Wow. You're gonna see the video now with the policeman proving that the miracle happened. Let's watch wow. it. Okay. You had an injury to your spine, correct? On your neck? Yes. I. First, I had a car accident where a deer tried to come through my windshield and messed up two vertebrae in my neck. And then about three years later, I fell off a porch about six feet up in the air straight onto my head. Messed up number three and four vertebrae in my neck, split them clear in two. And that's basically it. Now, you have metal in your neck, is that right? Or you had metal in your neck? Okay. Well, what did they do? Did they subs like like... Try to foundation the, the spine with the metal. What is it? Well, it was welded. I have a cadaver part in there and screws and bolts and all kinds of stuff. And I've just had constant tightness in my neck and shoulders ever since until last night. Can you check again for us right now? And I still don't feel it. So, in other words, IE is gone. 21 years ago, you had a severe accident. Tell us what happened. Well, I was working in the oil field uh, offshore in New Orleans in the Gulf of Mexico and on a drilling rig. And when you pick up drill pipe to make a connection, you pick it up with a chain to bring it into the mouse hole. And the chain broke and it fell on me and broke my neck and broke my back. How big is that pipe? It's about 32 feet long and weighs probably two, 3,000 pounds. I've had three major back surgeries since then. They had to take a bone out of my hip go through the front of my neck and fuse C4, 5, 6, and 7. And then my low back, I have a 15-inch scar where they did a laminectomy and put in three 10-inch rods, two plates, and several screws that tighten the plates. I had asked you last night, Larry, if you had ever been able to actually touch and feel the plates and the rods with your hand, and you said no. No. So I, we couldn't actually check to see if they were gone, like we did with the other Larry. And, you know, he could feel them and then he didn't, they were gone. The nurse could give me a quick x-ray. We were hoping one of the, the police could bring down one of the metal things. Can we do it? Can we do it? Oh, where are you? Where are you, Larry? Okay. Uh, I think it's right here, isn't it? Okay. Sergeant, explain what one of these is. It detects metal, uh, and it'll go through the skin also, so it was legit. Now, I saw you. You actually went and got that. We're so grateful. Aren't we so grateful? Can we give Sergeant a hand? Aren't we so grateful? Okay. What would that mean to you, that, that you weren't detecting any metal on men that once had metal in their bodies? It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So that was so incredible, right? That was so awesome. Okay, now this freaked those men out so bad, right, that what they did was they decided they were going to find out if this was a con job or a real miracle. Sure. So they followed those two guys to the chow hall. Now, in that facility, that chow hall has a metal detector. That they have to go through. They have to go through it to get in the chow so nobody gets stabbed while they're right. eating, right? And they know, everybody knows that those two guys set it off. That day and from then on, they never set it off again. Wow. Now, that sergeant that wanted uh, Larry, the um, both of them, right. okay, the one Larry with the neck is still in the yard. The other one got out. 
Okay, so now whenever that sergeant's on duty and he sees that Larry walking across the yard, he stops him and he wants him again. <laughs> because he's in awe. He is. It is awesome. He's, in he's awe. just double checking. Did this really happen? Right. And a lot of times when we work in the miracle dimension, it, it is so natural when it happens. We think it's going to be really spectacular. Yeah. But it's so natural that it makes you think, did that really happen? Right. And that's why I had to keep checking it. I think right. it's amazing. It was fun because the volunteers that were there, when they were standing behind the layer with the neck, they didn't know that I saw angels coming down the staircase mm -hmm. carrying platters with body parts right. and they're watching him they're standing behind him and while I'm ministering to him the back of his shirt was flapping Wow! because there was wow. an angel back there making wow. the exchange yeah, and it says the, the, the angels are winds yes yeah, wow. so it's interesting yes but you've seen so many of these miracles especially with um, metal leaving the body yes. but obviously if someone's had a surgery to have metal put in their body and that metal gets removed there's got to be a creative miracle with it because whatever that that metal replaced yes. has to be now replaced with a true body part right and that's what god does he is a god of the miraculous yeah. now we have heard of many uh, miracles, creative miracles happening over the television screen, over the computer mm. screen. So you might need a miracle in your body and you just keep letting your faith get built up here because God might have one for you today. We're gonna take a break and then we'll be right back. Welcome back. I am so excited about this and, and the potential miracles that are going to take place all over the world through this program. Mm. And I know a mutual friend of ours was ministering on a television program one time and had a word of knowledge about someone's leg uh, being created because they'd had an amputation wow. and the leg grew out. And so uh, they have the testimony of that. So God can do anything, wow. anywhere, anytime, Come right? Come on, yeah. This is so exciting. Amen. But you have in the Lord, um, been given revelation yep. about ways that we can position ourselves for a creative miracle and for the dispatching of the angelic right. realm. And it's not really that difficult. The first thing I always do when I'm praying for people is I pray for their souls to be healed. Because when your soul has been wounded by trauma or sin or stressful mm -hmm. situations, that wounded area inside the soul prevents, actually blocks a miracle from manifesting. The Bible does say that you will prosper and be in health even as, as your, soul, your prospers. soul prospers. So I always command people to be healed of trauma. I release the Holy Spirit. So if anybody's looking for this kind of creative miracle, that's the first thing they should do. Just say, Holy Spirit, yeah. search my soul, heal my soul of all woundedness, all trauma, all sin. Okay, and then the second thing is the, the man in the plane, and it's Jesus. The more we make Jesus the first and foremost yeah. of our focus in everything, sitting on him, waiting on him, reading about him, learning mm -hmm. about him, listening to him, the more we're going to see angels coming, the more we're going to see creative miracles happening. I mean, think about it. In John 1, Jesus is just meeting up with Nathaniel for the first time. He tells Nathaniel, I saw you sitting underneath the fig tree. And Nathaniel is so awestruck that he knew that Jesus saw where he was before he came to meet him. Yep. He goes, wow, you really are the son of God. And he basically says to Nathaniel, you think that's something? Well, you're going to see the heavens open up and angels oh, wow. ascending and descending on the son of man. So angels were always ascending and descending on Jesus. Yeah. I mean, you know, the angel came, Gabriel, to tell Mary that she was going to have Jesus, that the Holy Spirit would overshadow her. You know, the angels came to Joseph, the, his earthly father, yeah. to warn him to take Jesus to Egypt because Herod was going to kill the babies, yeah. and then to tell him when to come back. Angels were there to, to minister to Jesus when he went through the 40 days in the mm -hmm. desert. They were there in, in Gethsemane when he was having the agonizing mm -hmm. night of prayer before the crucifixion. They were there at the tomb to roll away the stone and to say, he is risen, he's not here. Mm -hmm. Angels, angels, angels are always ascending and descending on Jesus. Yeah. So that means when we sit in his presence, when we make him first and foremost, yeah. He is, he is mighty God. He's over all the angels. He's the, the Lord, the captain of the host. Right. So we have to choose to put everything else aside to spend time with our Savior and Redeemer. Right on. Yeah. I know that years ago when 
um, I started teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. That was back in the 1980s, yeah. early 1980s. And I would be in a class of, let's say, 100, 120 people. And I would ask them, how many of you have ever seen or sensed an angel? Right. And at that time, like, there might be one or two in wow. a room of 100 to 120. Now, recently, wow. I was in a classroom again with about 100 to 120 people. And I thought, I'm going to ask now. Oh. And it was like about 90% wow. of the class had seen angels or sensed angels. Wow. That was just like a week ago. Yeah, wow. So what we're seeing in this day and hour is um, an acceleration of angelic visitation. Yes. What I find fascinating is throughout the Bible and th throughout church history, right. whenever there is an acceleration of angelic activity, it's around a time of great outpourings of the glory, Thank you, great God. outpourings of the Lord. And we're yes. about ready to see one of the greatest moves of God Thank well, you, it God. will be the greatest move of God ever. Right. The latter glory of the house is greater than the former. But so many angels are out there ministering right now yes. and being dispatched like never before. Even books written about angels. Yes. Never has there been so many books written right. about angels. It's true. And, 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 and the people have to understand this, too, is like you can only do so much on the anointing. Okay, you, we all have an anointing. We're right. all anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. And we can lay hands on people and pray for them to be healed. But there, this whole healing realm and miracle working realm goes to a brand new level when you have outside help, mm -hmm. when you have the glory outside, right. the presence outside, and angelic assistance. Right. I have people all the time calling me up and saying, oh, I just went to a new level and I had the most unusual miracles. I said, it's because you got an angel assigned to you. As soon as angels are assigned yeah. to help us. See, you so know, there was awesome. a question earlier in the program, you know, I need a new thyroid. Do I have to access the kingdom to get it? Yes, because there's no new thyroids floating around here on earth. Right. They're all contained in heaven sure. where everything is, right? Well, angels can easily make the track. Sure. They ascend and sure. descend. So they can go up there and get it and bring it back down. Absolutely. Yes. And and we've seen um, angels, well, let me back backtrack. In Psalm 103, verse 20, yeah. mm -hmm. it says that angels actually obey the voice of the Lord's commands, yes. right? Yes. So we're the voice for the Lord in we the are. earth. So when we decree the word, and there's been so much decreeing lately, yes. we're actually dispatching angels. So the more the word is decreed, the more the word is preached, the more we dispatch angels. Right. And they're just like looking for assignments. But what I was getting is um, the healing of financial issues, because sometimes we have sickness in our body or yep. we need a new body mm -hmm. part but sometimes we need a miracle of provision brought to us and i've seen angels right. bring food yeah i've seen in, in fact i have been a recipient of an angel actually feeding me directly wow and i have also seen angels bring miracles wow like where there was no provision bringing provision okay well in deuteronomy 111 right it says um i the lord oh no deuteronomy 818 i the lord give you the power, power. to create wealth yeah. that word power there means the power of god and the strength of angels wow so god actually causes his angels to come and yeah. give us power right. to create wealth yeah, by bringing just, us blessings provisions etc it's yes. amazing mm -hmm. i mean we've seen that over and over in the oh, ministry yes. for sure yes now you have a testimony that we want to go to right yes. now that was powerful a miracle in one of your meetings. Right, and, and this is so fun because this guy had punched somebody out, he was a prisoner, and he shattered his knuckle completely, and he lost it, and he hadn't had a knuckle there for oh. years. And God, one of the <laughs> angels I saw one day bringing platters with body parts oh down, there was a knuckle on oh. the platter. And he didn't even feel it when the angel put it in. He went to a med line and he was standing there all of a sudden he was cracking his knuckles and he realized, wow, I have a knuckle. And it came in small and then it grew. Oh, wow. So it was like God oh, was making wow. sure the knuckle oh. would fit and then it grew right to his perfect size because oh, this guy man. had massive knuckles. God loves us so yes. much. Yes. He even cares about a man's knuckle. Right that got shattered while punching someone. Right. Isn't he a restorer? Right. So we're going to throw to that video right now so that you can see the miracle with your own eyes on the screen. And uh, then we'll be right back after to minister to you. Tell us your name. Rich. Rich, you know, Chris came earlier because you were in a visit and he told us a very interesting story about a miracle that you had. And first he told us that you had had an issue with one of your knuckles. Can you tell us that story? Well, it happened when I was 15. I got in a fight at school, shattered my, I don't know which finger it was, but shattered this knuckle right here. 
Chris, you actually saw Rich's hand before the miracle. Did you see that he didn't have a knuckle, or, or is he making it up? He didn't have one. I mean, I didn't believe him at first when I first got here and everything, and I felt it, and there was nothing there. So you actually felt the knuckle, and there was not a knuckle there. So he'd actually lost the knuckle. Okay, so now I want you to touch that knuckle now. Does it feel different from the one that you first saw? Yeah, there's actually a knuckle there. I don't feel like it's a gap in there anymore. <laughs> Come on now. What's your name, sir? Tim. So, Tim, did you see the knuckle or feel the knuckle before the miracle? Yes, he, showed, he told me about the knuckle a couple weeks ago, and I didn't, you know, I had to check it out and feel it. So you did check it out and feel it? There was no knuckle there. There was no knuckle there. Now, I want you to feel it now. Oh, I can tell you, because I checked it last night. <laughs> And there was just a little nub there last night. There was just a little nub there last night. Now, that's before the meeting? Last night, after the meeting. After the meeting. Oh, there, that was a nub. And so you're saying it's grown since it came in. Last night, it was as big as this little finger knuckle. And now, it's a big knuckle now. Now it's full grown. So you're saying it came in as a nub and it grew. Yes. Yeah. Are you concurring with that? Yeah. yeah. It came in as a little nub and it grew. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting twist. Wow. So, you're, so you are validating and witnessing that this man has had a, a real miracle. Come on, let's give God a big praise. Come on. Thanks, guys. Well, welcome back. Wasn't that an amazing testimony of that Amen. prisoner who received the new knuckle? <laughs> I'm sure that in the prison that day, there was yeah. a lot of you know, excitement going around. Oh, I yeah. mean, that is so cool. I love how he had shown a bunch of people the knuckle before it happened and they, would, they had all felt it. Oh yeah, wow, you are, you're missing a knuckle. And then well, they felt it afterwards. So there was oh. tangible proof that he received a brand new knuckle so I thought that was so God to you do that. You know what I love about those kind of miracles is not only, I mean, it's going to give them more comfort in life for yeah, sure, sure and more mobility, and God cares about all those things. Mm. But more than anything, it spoke to him about how much God loved him. Yeah. That, you know, he wasn't holding anything against him for the mistake he'd made. Right. He's a God of restoration. <laughs> and I'm sure that that spoke to the other prisoners too, thinking, yes. well, we know this dude. I mean, he did a bad thing and right. he got hurt as a result, but look at God's kindness. Isn't that and I'm just getting a word right now for someone who's watching that you've been struggling because you feel bad. You've made some mistakes in your life and you've got this, this identity of just being a bad person, but it's not how God sees you. He loves you so much. And you've got some issues right now that are going on in your life and you don't feel that you're worthy to even ask God to help you, but he wants to help you and he wants to bring a creative miracle. In fact, you need one right now in the area of provision. And I just see yeah. angels being dispatched to bring a creative miracle to you in the area Amen. of provision. Yes, and I feel like people are thinking, wow, this is so big. I could never have this. this this realm isn't for me. This is for the big people that know how to work big miracles. But I just want to encourage you that Jesus is saying right now, just get in my presence. Come and worship me. Just push aside all the thoughts, all the doubts, all the fears, and just focus on loving me, listening to me, waiting on me, worshiping me, exalting me, and I'm going to make it happen for you. Mm -hmm. And one of the keys is expectation. Yeah. And I feel that a lot of you have lost your expectation, but I remember you know, back a number of years ago, there was a season where God was giving gold teeth out. Oh yeah, I know? remember, yeah. And so many, many received gold, gold teeth. And they were some, expecting, right? Even a, um, a sapphire tooth. Right. Well, the first night that we saw the creative miracle, yeah everyone got their flashlights out and were looking inside the mouth <laughs> wow. to see it. Yeah. But what it did is it released expectation yes. and then more and more and more. Right. So night after night, it got to a point where the college kids were coming out to the revival meeting because they heard wow. that God was giving out new teeth. Oh my God. teeth. And so they would come to look at the miracle. Yes. So if you've lost your expectation, 
I just, I just pray for a restoration of expectation. Go look for the miracle. If you need one, go look for it. And as you tell that story, I'm just reminded of a story of, of two different men. There were uh, actually a man and a woman. A woman in one of the meetings that you were holding and I, that I was speaking at, she received a miracle when an angel came and actually moved her bones into place. She had a right. collarbone problem, right. right? She yep. had it sticking up and out. Yep. And, and the collarbone was moved into place. Yep. And the people next to her could hear it crickling and crackling. Yeah, so it was awesome. Yeah, and then she could move her arm and she could do things she couldn't do before. All her pain was gone. It's she slept so that amazing. night. It was so beautiful, right? But then there was another man in that same meeting and he didn't have expectation. And I kept on looking at him. He had metal in his back. I kept on looking at him and I would go like this and he would go. And so at the end of the meeting, I ran up to him and I said, test it. And I go, you know, check, be expectant, check to see if something has happened. And he would go, no, still hurts. And I go, no, no, check more. And he would go, still hurts. And I go, no, move, <laughs> wiggle, check more. And he wouldn't do it. And he walked out disappointed Aww. and he didn't get the miracle. Aww. So keep checking, keep expecting, right. like, like, you know, like you said, and that's like look pressing for it. In. Yes, it and is. And that's what the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in. Yes. She pressed in until she got a hold yes. of, of the cloak, which she, pulled out pulled the virtue, yes, you know, amen. and sometimes that's what you have to do with your yes, faith is amen. pull on the virtue of Jesus Christ because we're in a season of miracles. They're happening all the time, all around us, and uh, he wants to work them in you and he wants to work them through you as well. So we release an anointing mm. on your life to go and do the works of Jesus Christ, Thank to you, proclaim Jesus. him in amen. a big way. This is what supernatural life is all about. We're not just earthly beings trying to get into heaven. We're heavenly beings living in the earth. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us on today's program. We'll see you next time. And this entire week until the next time, you go live a supernatural life. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony, or prayer request today. Or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv forward slash Patricia. And join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.